mean, the, the question here is, what is a, what is a proper steroid use though, versus improper steroid use? You know, so what is hormone replacement therapy? And I, I'm going to tell you the way I got introduced to, to uh, testosterone, actually. My father was a doctor back in Serbia, actually Yugoslavia back in the day. There was a bag, you know, the doctors would go to the other houses. And uh, I remember the first time I was seeing, uh, like, ample testosterone. I'm like, oh my God, what is that? And of course, my father explained me male hormone testosterone, which makes us men, mm. you know, more muscular, more aggressive, bigger, stronger, right? That declines as we age. And it was, it was back in the 70s mm -hmm. that uh, my father said, yeah, that's uh, very wise to uh, replenish what you uh, stop making. So he was, yeah, I'm not going to say pioneer of uh, <laughs> Uh, 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 testosterone uh, replacement therapy, but mm -hmm. he was doing this back in the 70s, mm -hmm. okay? But we're talking about we're talking about dosages that are prescribed, uh, dosages. prescribed so, by a doctor. So right? what, what was the dosage? This is how, like, what needs to be replaced. As you know, normally it's given, like, 250 milligrams initially for every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. That's for normal man, okay, that uh, is, you know, uh, declining in... in uh, uh, levels of testosterone they have. Mm -hmm. So this would be uh, a start. And then it would be up to like 250 a week uh, that uh, was considered, okay, especially if you are more physically active, if you are going to the gym, you have some breakdown, mm -hmm. uh, you have a justification of using a little bit more. Uh, there was late 90s, and uh, I can't quote you which study, but there was famous study there was uh, published, uh, the, there was like, thousands of uh, men mm -hmm. with uh, 600 milligrams of testosterone a week. This is probably which revolutionized all these uh, uh, clinics and hormone replacement uh, therapy clinics that, that, that start popping out everywhere. And they, they had uh, tremendous positive results and none of the negatives with uh, 600 milligrams a week, which was like, so advanced and so like unbelievable amount that you shouldn't be taking. Mm -hmm. So, as you know, you, you have been around the bodybuilders. I can openly tell you, I have never used more than 750 milligrams of testosterone a week for all the years that I was competing. And this is uh, what I'm cycling. Okay, with that you add, uh, you know, certain other things. But 500 to 750 milligrams was my standard. And uh, uh, this would be my standard right now, mm -hmm. uh, 500 milligrams a week uh, uh, for, for somebody my age. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm still going to the gym six days a week. You know, so I found this, uh, and I've been doing this for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to tell you this also. I had, a, as a teenager, genetic disorder of uh, my liver, hepatic uh, Gilbert syndrome which uh, basically I was told, oh my God, if you train with the weights and uh, if you touch the steroids, you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. This is like, you know, so critical. And here I am 30 something years later, uh, still training six days a week mm -hmm. and still taking steroids. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if I didn't have a life, uh, <laughs> threatening divorce at the one point I would uh, look much healthier and younger <laughs> at this point but I don't complain you know like so uh, again I, I just want to speak openly to the all the audience because as soon as they hear steroids danger uh, heart attacks um, cardiovascular problems renal problems hepatic problems really mm -hmm. how many bodybuilders do you know that really die exclusively, that they can point fingers at steroids. There are many deaths in bodybuilding contributed to many many other things that were using not anabolic steroids. You know, so uh, it, it's just uh, a fact. You know, the, the, the people jump into conclusions, but uh, again, what you're going to get when you take something exogenous from the outside, testosterone, or some synthetic derivative of uh, testosterone or the anabolic steroids formulations, they have a maybe higher anabolic effect, lesser androgenic effect, more tissue uh, promoting 
constructive uh, actions, recovery. I mean, I was at four degree burns back in 2004. Mm -hmm. As soon as I walked into the uh, Medicopa Burn Center in Arizona, doctor told me, you know, sir, I'm going to put you on the uh, anabolic steroid oxandrolone and uh, I said, <laughs> you know, are you going to lower my dosage or increase it? And mm -hmm. let me tell you, you know, that was back in that time, and people would know dosages of oxandrolone. Uh, they had the studies on 130 milligrams a day. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. uh, nobody really actually takes that much, but that was uh, uh, indicated for for a uh, uh, injury. Uh, so this is uh, what I want to tell you. In the last 30 years, I probably communicated with uh, over 10,000 bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. Amateur professional level uh, all over the world doing uh, conducting seminars and of course they're talking openly. Mm -hmm. um, I had uh, many bodybuilders, uh, literally. Okay, it's a good friend of mine, a German guy. That he says, "Look, Milos, I'm a living proof that no amount of steroids can kill the man," <laughs> because he was doing a you know obscene amounts and uh, which. I'm, I'm not promoting, and I'm not saying that uh, people would uh, supposed to do that. But there are those extreme cases. This guy is still in Germany, kicking ass, still looking good. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, even though he was abusing it for many, many years. So um, this is that one touchy subject that uh, you know. Sometimes you touch a subject, mm -hmm. but we all agree. Okay, let's not do it. Let's let's uh, uh, tell it's dangerous, so nobody should ever touch it. Anybody at 50 years of age plus, I would tell you, you should go to uh, your doctor, check your testosterone level, see where it's at, and if it's low, replace it because you're going to have a completely different life with more energy, more sense of well being. Uh, recuperation will be on a different level, libido is going to you know, be increased. So, all the actually things that we want. Mm -hmm. This is why, you know, people are always saying it's, uh, steroids are addictive. Well, they're not really psychologically addictive, but uh, physiologically, when you feel like a clap you can't... You feel how you feel them, right? Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you feel like you're stronger, you can mm -hmm. basically fly if you're Superman, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the kind of things. And, and look, I'm talking to a lot of athletes from another sports, and of course, they're all very warn, you know, like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this, it's dangerous, and all that stuff. It's not dangerous if you especially have a, a medical supervision and advice. The only problem is that no doctor is really that liberal to say, okay, look, mixed martial artists, they're having a six hours a day of, you know, beating, you know, to the, to the ground, you know, workouts, mm -hmm. day in, day out, day in, day out. They have a tremendous catabolic activity in their body that is going to basically, you know, waste them. Mm -hmm. So, would they be justified to use it? Yes, for me, absolutely. But it's not allowed because let's have a, you know, clean sport and proper sport. And, uh, you know, so from aspect of uh, clarity, you know, like, uh, let's all be natural. But uh, then again, how many athletes in Olympic Games you think are really natural. And this is what I had a rude awakening back in uh, 2000 when I had a you know, pleasure of working with uh, Baco Labs and uh, Charlie Francis uh, for a Project World Record mm -hmm. and talking to them. I said, look, you know, there's so many athletes that they use it, they just, you know, pass the test. Mm -hmm. So what we did, we did a Project World Record, you know, for a uh, uh, fastest man alive. I don't know if you actually even know that, but it's uh, on the internet. You can read it. And um, we created the fastest man, the fastest man alive within nine months. Yeah, using steroids. Yeah, using yeah undetectable steroids that any chemist right now can produce. There is instantly I can probably list to twenty uh, compounds that were never made, can never be tested for. And I, I'm not even uh, researching this anymore. But at that point, it's okay, we can do this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. And we created something. 
and they used it, and uh, everybody was passing a UCLA test, no problem. Mm -hmm. And this would this would go on, uh, you know, if there was not a uh, conspiracy that somebody sent a sample, you know, so they they actually test it for it. And once you have a metabolites or something, mm -hmm. then uh, you can back test everybody. And that was a huge scandal. But uh, in reality, you know, really. Um, I would like you, you have a natural Olympia t-shirt right now, I see it. So you're all promoting natural things. Yeah, I, I very much respect them and uh, I, I think it's great. But there is like so many athletes in so many sports, they're just pounding on their bodies. These kind of workouts are not physiologically uh, recommended. Mm -hmm. This is extremes. Mm -hmm. So should you have a justification of using something to promote healing? Mm 